Alrighty, so this is lesson two. We have got AD sync. Right. First thing you want to do uh, AD sync download. Well, the first thing you want to do is have your Microsoft 365 tenant. Uh, you should have that already. If not, uh, head over here now. Uh, if I develop, uh, uh, right, develop a program and join that. Set yourself up a free developer in instant sandbox. If you've already got yourself a Microsoft 365 tenant, Good stuff. Uh, right, so you want to come and get this one. Microsoft Azure Active Directory Connect Download. Now, if you want to skip all the server side stuff, you can. And you don't need to worry about sync. You can just be straight in that uh, 365 environment. But, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Let's go. Uh, right, customize. We want okay. No, we don't want to just sync groups, we're going to end up syncing the whole thing at least once. Uh, yeah, I want to go back. Oh no, we've got express. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so this is just setting everything up that we need. So, first thing we want to do, uh, you can have password hash sync, right? So that allows them to sign on to the cloud environment with the same password they use on prem. Uh, or you can set up pass through. That's not staying up for some stupid reason. Uh, uh, pass through enables AAD to auth using the on prem server. So, what that means is 
if you've got one domain controller and you have really bad internet or power issues and that domain controller goes offline frequently, you're not going to be able to sign in frequently. So I would only recommend that if you've got multiple domain controllers in multiple locations with a reliable connection. Now, ADFS, you can federate that whole thing. Right? What a federated signing means, you can use another service to authenticate into Microsoft 365. So, Uh, I haven't played around with that too much, but it's not something that you come across all the time. Maybe inside an organization with 500 to 1,000 users, we may have something federated on there. You can go to, yeah, they might have uh, Amazon Web Services, for instance, as their cloud infrastructure. And rather than set up whole new user accounts for everybody all over again, you can allow them to use those credentials to authenticate into Microsoft 365. And uh, here's another one, Ping Federate. I've never ever used Ping Federate. But um, yeah, it's another one that allows a third party service basically to authenticate for you. We're going to go with password hash synchronization and enable single sign on. Right, so what that does, we're going to create the users in Active Directory. And that's going to sync those users to Microsoft 365 using those same credentials. And either service can authenticate that user. And when we have single sign-on, depending on how our, device, uh, how our devices are joined, so if we get a server and we domain join our PC, all the Microsoft 365 cloud apps, such as Office, uh, you see you got like Word, Outlook, etc., they will all sign in because that's authenticated. Based upon the rules that we're going to set up in another lesson on conditional access. Right. So, connect to Azure AD. So you need a global admin or a hybrid identity administrator. So if you don't know what a hybrid identity administrator is, okay, so basically, I mean, best practice security is you don't give someone more access than what they need. So if someone needed you know, access to a shared folder, you don't just give them domain admin access to allow them, you know, yeah, they'll be able to get into that shared folder, but why would you make them a domain admin? So in saying that, if you're in a corporate environment and
and it's your job to decide what level of access to give someone <clears throat> in order to set this up you know even if you just created a brand new service account just for azure ad connect you can give it just that hybrid identity administrator role and that's all it can do so if you're going for best practice security you would want to go create that account <laughs> fuck it. let's go do that now uh, right where are we so i'm going to sign into my global administrator account Right now, this, this did previously have a sync, so you will see some errors and such. Uh, that's all good. Um, but yeah, I'll show you that. Go add a user. So A A D. Keep it uniform. Have it yell at me. Right. Um, no, let's let's make it just a service account. All right, later on when you get domains added, you can choose the domains. All right. All right. And well, we don't need to give it a license. It doesn't actually need anything. Roles. Right. Admin Senate access. We should have. Right. Oh, it wasn't identity governance, was it? Hybrid Identity Administrator. Right. So we should be able to find Hybrid Identity Administrator. All right. Here's the info. Full access to manage AAD Connect Cloud Provisioning. All right. Now, as this service account becomes more useful as in we're going to give it more access to more services and roles we can just add those roles rather than make a new user account for each one <clears throat> we can have an individual account for each one you would really only need that in larger environments but that works uh, That will just go through, sign itself in, verify it's got correct access. Right. Now, directory type, we've got active directory. That's the forest. So we want to use an existing AD account. So this 
<clears throat> must be an enterprise admin. Don't think I flat fingered it. I did. Oh. Okay. Never seen that one before. Uh, okay. Right, okay. Yeah, right. -o. We want AAD to automatically create the account. It seems they've made some updates. Uh, we still need to provide our enterprise admin, but we're not allowed to use the enterprise admin to do that. Right, so we have got our directory or our forest in there. So we go next. AAD sign in. So this domain will be not verified. Uh, if you've got a domain name that matches, which I do, but unfortunately it's tied to another 365 tenant. So I can't pull it into this one. Uh, right. So select on-prem attribute to use as the AAD username. Pick user principal name. <laughs> right. Continue without matching all UPN suffixes to verified domains. That's okay. Users will not be able to sign into AAD with on-prem credentials if the UPN suffix does not match a verified domain. That's okay too. That just means you have to use the on Microsoft.com as your username. You can write back attributes and make that the primary username and the user principal name inside AD. All right. Now, domain and OU filtering. You don't want to sync the entire thing. You don't even want to sync all of that. Because you don't want the disabled users in there. And don't want our folder groups being put in there either. Um, we also don't want servers managed because it just clutters up and it, it just ends up being too much crap. Uh, uh, yes, users are only represented once across all directories and let AAD choose the source anchor. So the source anchor, I mean, if you had a really old like server that you migrated from Windows Server 2000, small business server, and you, you brought it up all through, and it, you know, you've migrated it from 2000 to 2003, 2008, 2012, all that crap, you may have something that you would prefer to use as the anchor.
but you're better off in most cases. Just let Azure manage the source anchor. All right. Now you can uh, put some filtering in as well. Uh, you don't need to. You can just because we've already picked what directories we want. So if you don't want something synced, don't put it in those directories. Right. You want password right back. Device right back is in another section now. Extension attribute sync. Right. Group right back. Right. So that's giving us a warning because we haven't installed our exchange AD schema. That's okay. You can go group right back and then AD app attribute filtering. Yeah, you want to put that on. Right. So this allows uh, domain accounts to be configured for this, these services, basically. Um, I don't see any point in turning them off unless you absolutely do not want to use this particular service, but it can be handy. So next we go attributes. So all these attributes will come across to Azure AD. And now you can pick directory extensions, up to 100 of them, all right? So, uh, let's see. All right, so these are, you'll notice there's two, one's for user, one's for group. Um, I just like having these cloud extension attributes. Right. Add all of them. Yep. Cool. Now, group right back. No AAD schema for exchange. Yes, we already know that. That's fine. Now you pick the destination where you want that to go. Uh, right. Probably should have. Right. Yeah. Probably should have AAD groups in there as well. Uh, that's going to right. That needs to be refreshed. Back. AAD groups, say it's in LDAP <clears throat> speak. Yeah. Right, cool. Single sign on is done. Got a tick, so we don't need to enter the credentials. Right, and that's going to configure. Now, if you're not sure, you can enable staging mode and that will tell you what it's going to sync. 
before it sinks. Alright. Got we just install. That's going to create that. It's going to set up the sync for us. And I'm just going to. Uh, <clears throat> this takes some time. So I'm just going to. Yeah, go do whatever and come back and just speed this part up. All right, cool. So, let's go over this. So, it's using that as our source anchor. Uh, so, that's using a user ID. So, basically, when an account is created in AD, it gets a hidden attribute as a way of identifying it. Uh, if you were to delete that account and make one with the exact same name, it will be a different account. So unless they're deleted from both places, you're going to run into sync issues. All right, now this one, AD Recycle Bin is not enabled for your forums and is strongly recommended. So that's if you accidentally delete something, you can get it back. Uh, only way you can get to that is under AD Admin Center. All right, and you click over here. And you go enable recycle bin. All right. And that will take a few minutes to enable. And then you're all good to go. Uh, right, so it's still complaining. <clears throat> we need to configure the Federation service. Uh, I don't think. I don't think we're quite ready for that yet because I mean, the only reason we want ADFS for the time being is so that we can take advantage of the health reports from Microsoft 365. Uh, right. We haven't got the SSL certificate yet, so we may not be able to do it, but we can just try, yeah, we, we have to go create that. Um, <clears throat> we will probably end up doing that as a local self-signed certificate. just because it makes things easier. All right. Yeah, yeah, so that, that's going through, doing its thing. Um, the main thing you want to do from this point is just install any and all updates that appear under here. Right, so the sync service is not started. We also need to reboot. Yeah, because the sync's not coming up. We want to reboot and bring our sync up, All right? Uh, 
it's just very fresh. Uh, it's done one sink. As you can see, we've got our, uh, there's our admin account and there's our user account. So I guess because it's not really that complicated, we can throw this on its own. It's just assign a license. It's as simple as that. You come in here, opens up the user account info. And here you can see the username. <clears throat> when we get our domains added, this will be very different. Uh, so there's the groups that it's part of. These are These are Microsoft 365 groups. All right, so if I come into here. So you want to come to identity. That opens up your Entra Admin Center, formerly known as Azure AD. As you can see here, upcoming Azure AD rename. All right. So that brings us to uh, let's say groups, all groups. Now, I don't know why there are two Microsoft 365 groups. with the exact same name. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. So, yeah, we should be able to just delete Yep. Now it's not instant. It takes about a minute for everything to actually come through. I probably should have deleted that one. <laughs> Just looking at the name. That is not a big deal because it's just a crap group for everyone. That would be <clears throat> you email that to send out company wide emails. Uh, it's not important. Um, distribution groups, like you don't want to use the default shit anyway. Um, cool. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. All I'll be doing is rebooting after this. So between now and the next lesson, that's only a reboot.